Garden of Terror is the map in today's Heroes of the Storm video. We have Kinguin going up against Pushek. And of course, this is already quite a lot of fun. I mean, we've seen throughout the tournament how Pushik was able to take down Meteor Makers and they just destroyed them on Tomb of the Spider Queen, which was a quite a pretty decent performance, actually, if you consider how well Meteor Makers did in the last few days and weeks. Pushik team is now going up against another top team in Europe, against Kinguin. And of course, there were a couple of lineup changes just recently as well. And we're now going to try and find out if Pushik team can overcome that top team here now as well, or if Kinguin is putting a stop to the Polish performance here in the end of the storm to qualifier. The map, as already mentioned, is Garden of Terror. We have pretty cool lineups here once again, especially for Pushik team who were able to secure themselves Muradin and Taranda once more. The same gank squad that they used already in the previous game against Meteor Makers to really put a lot of pressure on the opponent. But still, Kinguin is have, are running this with a double heal and double heal can of course work with us quite a bit. We have a Malfurion and an Uther in there and also a Kalthas behind the lines which can always help out. And the one thing that's really interesting about Kinguin as well is that they are running Arthurs a lot these days. So Arthurs is really working well for them and we're going to find out right now if they can secure another victory in this best of one match now here on Garden of Terror. So guys, without further ado, let's jump right in and see who's going to take the game. We are in the round of eight of the Enter the Storm tournament. Well, of course, we are in the qualifier still. The first qualifier, the first of nine. And we have Kinguin going up against Pushik Team after Pushik Team absolutely destroyed Meteor Makers in the last round. They're now going up against Kinguin. And to the left side, we have Kinguin, the German team, with Snow on Kalthas. We're having Nepsa on Uther, Nurok, who replaced Antihero on Arthas, Invidium on Sylvanas, and Get am Herd is playing Malfurion here. To the right side of the map, it is the Polish team. Germany versus Poland with Goterra on Muradin. We have Schuf, aka Rutzuf, aka Ralf, on Rega. Jubek on Tyranda, Kreku on Jena, and Uberim on Nazibo. So, this should be an interesting one. Since we're having also now the full Warcraft lore team to the left side, the German team decided to only pick Warcraft heroes for this match, as we're seeing Arthurs, for example, moving in now up at the front line. And it's kind of nice to see Nurok with the team here. He's a great player that, of course, before played for Team Dignitas and is now part of Team King Green after they uh, let Antihero go. Currently, in this game, now we have the Fell Infusion on the side of Kel'thas, which is actually starting to become a bit more of a popular talent. At least Snow really likes to take this one over Mana Addict. Apparently not really too worried about Mana problems in this game, since he's also in the same team with a Malfurion. And we all know that Malfurion, of course, can use the, his mana ability, like his, his passive use of water, his trade to give other heroes mana and that's of course something that Snow is currently relying upon. So Gat is going to have to do that continuously, at least throughout the early game and then the late game it's usually not that much of an issue. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really the strength of Tyrande Muradin and also of course Jaina. First of all, Tyrande Muradin with that stun lockdown that you have against the Squishy and if then uh, Jaina is behind you and drops that blizzard, yeah, you get you get annihilated pretty fast. That's exactly what we saw here. So that was kind of expected, I have to say, but it's of course difficult to always say, all right, I'm going to be able to dodge that. And there's a counter kill also, as Uberim is now taken out up at the top lane. Perfect timing. The seats are just now spawning on the map. We are on Garden of Terror, of course, and the first night. Seats are still kind of important. The teams are already aiming straight for them. Very well played. I really like the aggression that we have in the games in general today. The games have been a lot of fun. It was actually quite cool to see how aggressive the teams are right now. Level 1, by the way, is with the wind on the side of Sylvanas, in case that you want a ring. No barbed shot taken, at least not in this case. Up to the top, we're having Nurog, Nepsa, and uh, Shuf on his Rhaegar still facing each other. Both of the teams are, of course, now eyeing those big terrors. And with those big garden terrors, you can actually take your time. You don't really have to directly go for them. This is one of the big mistakes a lot of players make when they are playing, for example, Hero League or Team League, that they think they have to immediately attack the uh, Garden Terror. You don't really have to do that. You can also soak a bit of experience. If you do, though, then you should commit, and that's exactly what we are currently seeing happening there. Good kill at the bot lane here. Snow and Imbidorm getting a kill against Jaina. That was an important one. But up at the top lane, we're already having the Polish team uh, securing themselves a lot of seats. They're currently at 75 versus 61. And down at the bot lane, we're having Gadam Herd, Nurok, and Snow together. So you can really see that Malfurion and Snow are staying together most of the time so that, well, Malfurion can use his Innovate. 
and uh, pass the mana to over to him. But uh, at the same time, now we're having Ingebrim up to the top together with Nepsa. And well, with the level 4 talents coming into play, we are also seeing now the Feral Heart. There's a lot of different builds out for Rega right now. Well, actually, most of the builds are kind of the same, but the level 4 talent is one where you have choices. These days, Shadow Wolf is being uh, picked a bit more often. For example, Gamers 2 has chosen the talent just recently, where you become invisible when you go into wolf form. You can use that, especially when you go for the Spirit Walker's Grace at level 1, since that reduces your mana costs on the chain here and then you don't necessarily need feral heart nice attempt by the way to steal the camp away i'm really liking it there's a cool trap that we are seeing from the polish team and wow the aggression that they've showed in the last game already was amazing but right now they are just doing exactly the same thing they just move from kill to kill two kills for both of the teams though since king Guin is also trying to lock targets down with the howling blast on arthur's who went for destruction on level four for the extra damage on his frostmon we're seeing uh, Malfurion with the scouting drone on level 1 and on level 4 we're having him uh, with the Loon's Grace for the extra range on his basic abilities. The first terror in the game by the way is straight for Get Amherd and already Terror is trying to make sure that he's first of all slowed down and also he's trying to get more damage stacked with his perfect storm on level 1 going for the full storm bolt build and of course Sledgehammer on level 4 is a crucial element of this build since you're just trying to stack up as much damage as you can in the early game and then later you can do so much damage against structures and a Zebo at the top lane was taken out by Nurok and Nepse it's really just this howling blast into stun combo that they're running here oh and Chubek just barely able to dodge that Silvana's at the bot lane dying now though and well we could see another kill against Snow he doesn't have the mana to go for gravity laps but Kraku was already so low on uh, Jaina that they simply said all right let this one pass we can't follow him up uh, would be a bit too risky yeah, damn Herz, the team is playing a double healer comp, so normally when you play double healer, you always want to put one of your healers into the plan. If you play double tank, it's usually one of the tanks. Uh, melee assassins are also priority uh, heroes to get the Garden Terror or the Dragonite, if you have a choice, of course, only that is. Level 7 now with Unstable Poison. We have cleanse for both of the teams. In the last patch, Blizzard changed things up quite a bit. Teams were a bit complaining that only two of the healers had cleanse and uh, Blizzard realized that it was definitely an issue. So now four of the heroes have a cleanse. Rhaegar, Malfurion, uh, Brightwing and Uther have cleanse. Lili, the only hero that doesn't have a level 7 cleanse available. Later on in level 16 you have herbal cleanse, but of course is a bit of a different talent that you can also not target as easily as you can with a cleanse and that 9 level difference is definitely an issue as well. So right now we're seeing both of the teams running cleanse just to negate of course the stuns and this is especially important for King Queen since they have been struggling against those stun chains. Especially Nurok and Nepsa are gonna try and emulate that with their howling blast and stun against the squishies, especially of course well actually like most of the heroes that we're seeing on the setup except maybe for Rhaegar and Muradin can be taken out by those two quite easily but now that we have level 10 it still hits faster for King Green. they've been doing a decent job with the, in the first night with the seed gathering and have really been able to use that so right now as you can see heroics coming into play for both of the teams and even though the seeds are there the camp is taken first Chubek and uh, Juf are currently trying to get one stun in but they are not there's the rule what elemental already being used and Malfuri and trying to heal everybody out with tranquility. Nice silence from Sylvanas, but it might not be enough. There's the kill against Get. Even tranquility not saving him. Terra, of course, is even stacking more damage on his Q, going for the storm bolts here, one after another. Heroic abilities, no big surprises, but we didn't see the heroic chosen for yeah, for Tyranna just yet. Could go for Shadow Stalk, but that's normally something that Vitus Pro really likes to do. Most of the other teams still go in the Starfall, but we have not seen the talent pick just yet. Phoenix, of course, for the zoning on the side of Kel'Thas. I mean, Pyroblast, we've only seen Pyroblast on the European server once in competitive play, and that was when JPL uh, Navi misclicked his talent. Nice damage here at the bot lane, and here is, of course, now Starfall. That Starfall and the Phoenix comp, of course, on, op on opposite sides, but still cool. Oh, and the Divine Shield had to be dropped to save Malfurion. It's a lot of aggression that we are seeing uh, from the Polish team here. And I mean, it's very difficult, even with the double healer, to keep these heroes alive, as you can already see. The problem is really that with that setup that pushing team is running, double heal oftentimes doesn't really do anything for you. Because once the Hunter's Mark is applied and you are locked down in that stun chain, 
Double heal doesn't help you since it's a lot of like that heal over time, especially on the side of Malfurion. If you get the Divine Shield in, or maybe the Protective Shield on the side of Uther, then of course that helps. But targets are being sniped so fast that it's very tricky for the healers to really heal that damage out and keep them alive. Of course, once that we are seeing Jaina moving in with the extra damage on her on her abilities with a blizzard against like several players then double heal is absolutely amazing but this is one of the things that King Green is definitely struggling with right now again a phoenix to zone them out the plant is occupying two heroes up at the top go terror is trying to just keep those two occupied and of course also do uh, trying to apply a bit of damage there bot lane on the other hand that's a completely different meta even with the silence that we just saw it looks like oh wow actually a very aggressive move by Nidom jumping to the haunting wave here we have Nurok moving in out too gets how Glass gets cleansed away and Snow is trying to follow this up. It was already mounted, but got yeah, he mounted immediately. So yeah, pretty interesting attempt to turn this around, but a nice retreat on the side of Pushik team, very coordinated and also having that last second cleanse ready so that they could make sure that there was no stun and no holding blast of course especially. Already with a level 13 talents on the side of the Polish team and in this case they are going straight for the healing talent on Rega with a healing surge. We're having a double sprint now taken, only hero that couldn't take sprint is Jaina got taken away in the last patch and again contesting the camp at the bot lane or at least trying to but this time go terror is a bit too late and they have to take down the camp itself uh, jumping over here to steal at least the siege giant camp away and this is one of the few that they could be able to get the problem that King Green still has is that they are now falling behind in experience and they don't have a level 13 talent. And with that, they are finding themselves in a very uncomfortable situation where taking team fights is a massive risk and one that they do not want to take. So down to the bot lane, we have now two heroes again just like be pushing and putting more pressure onto the fort, which this time should actually fall. And Muradin is already moving in and thanks to the piercing bolt and also the way that he hit that, he just dealt 1000 and roughly 700 damage to the structures there 840 or 850 to each if I'm not mistaken so yeah very well done here Taro is becoming a bit of a menace when it comes to taking down structures and Zebo up at the top lane is the only one who's still split from the team just simply says like you know what boys I'm gonna deep push that lane you do your thing just make sure that you don't engage into a 5 versus 5 battle because well I'm not there so right now the 13 talents also on board for King Green and that's a lot of safety that they have there with a double spell shield already taken one on Uther and the other one on Arthur's. Arthur's with rune tap on level 7 with block on level 1 and the army of the dead is of course super tanky and on the next level he will also have access to stone skin which actually Nurok doesn't always take only if he really feels pressured in the fights and I guess that is going to be the case when you're up against the Tyranda and Muradin composition but you could also go for Frostmourne feats which he took quite a lot already and then you get a lot of damage out there. But here's the attempt to drop Arthurs. They're flanking from the side once again. The Polish team is going straight for the Prince. But the Divine Shield helping him out. At least for now, the counter aggression against Murder. But he gets healed out by an Ancestral Healing at the same time. The boss also wants a piece of the cake. Jumps in, tries to stun a few of the heroes out. So much damage here on the side of King Queen. But it's not enough to drop the heroes. Krako is extremely low on Jaina. But still alive enough to just move in once again. And trying to apply another Blizzard with Shuv healing him out. And there's the kill against. Kelthos and Nurok just barely missed by that last second Luna Blaze. They're moving in to try and take down Ged. The double heal is keeping everybody alive for now, but still that one kill is more than enough for the Polish team to just move back now and make sure that they get more seats, especially since they just hit level 16. So now we have the tidal wave on Rega, which will help him in those team fights to just get more and more chain heals out. We're seeing stone form on the side of Muradin uh, that makes him so difficult to take down. And besides that, shooting star and northern explosion, and of course these annoying leaping spiders from Azebo are also being added to the game right now. A lot of seeds here. Both of the teams are growing a garden terror, but the one thing that's really important to note is that at the top lane with level 16 versus 14, Pushik team is moving in again to take even more of the seeds, and they could also get this one. And that would basically mean that they have two plants in a row. The first plan is not really going to be an issue for King Green since they have a plan on their own so they can just like play that plant battle but once that the second one comes into play then things are going to start to be very very different here and that's the big big risk that they are running in this case. There comes the kill against the plant and this is yeah this is easily going to be a second one. So the first one also going to be 
I guess a risk in the sense that we're having the level 16 talent already on the side of Pushek, and these guys are playing absolutely, I mean, they're playing really well. When they won against Meteor Makers earlier in such a convincing fashion, I was really a bit surprised. I didn't expect them to dominate this hard, but they played very well, and I was like, all right, they had a good team, they had a good start into the game, but right now they're showing off their skills again. Pushek team really improving here over the last few weeks, and they're currently showing this in the qualifier, and if it continues like this, King Green might face elimination in this tournament, but well, we're not there just yet. Get on hand and go Terra, both of the heroes in the plants here. Of course, on the side of Team King Green, it is one of the healers that took the plant. Rotation to the top lane for additional experience. I mean, Pushik team knows, Pushik team's position, like the one risk that they run right now is that they become cocky. That they just like become a bit too arrogant and complacent and just say like, all right guys, we got this. We have a two-level lead, there's nothing that can happen. Because there's always something that can happen. And in this case, you have to make sure that you still gather experience, try to push your opponent, de-push the lanes, make sure that everything, that you have the map control and the vision on the map, and play it just safe and sound. And that is what they're currently aiming for. Level 16 is going to hit very soon for King Green, and this is when they have their power spike on Kalthas with Ignite on the, as the talent. So that's, of course, extremely dangerous to deal with. You need, like, they are still in a great position, don't get me wrong, but it's still one of those things where you have to make sure that you still concentrate, because here is all the stuff. Storm is a game that does not forgive mistakes in the late game. If you make a mistake in the later stages, especially after level 20, then your heroes are going to be down for a long, long time, and that is the timing window where your opponent can do a lot of damage. So they have to be careful. The 16 talent now for both of the teams, as we finally have King Green on level 16 with Ignite, Benediction, Stone form taken. Yeah. And for Sylvanas, we do not see Cold Embrace, so apparently more worried about staying alive than about dropping a target in uh, immediately. Also, Tenacious Roots now taken once more, uh, which is becoming more and more popular. Back in the days, well, well, just like two or three weeks back before the last patch, it was more so hard and focused that it got taken on the hero, but right now, Tenacious Roots is for most teams the talent to take. Go Taro, Shubek, Utsov on, well, Shub and Uberim, they are moving in together with Kreku here and are trying to use that second plan that I mentioned earlier to get the damage in, and this is really the tricky one. This is the one where you somehow have to defend your keep, and I do not know if it's possible. It's a 15 minute plan that we have here, and the one thing that of course Gotero has to be careful about is that he doesn't waste it. And there's a lot of damage potential that we're seeing for King Green, and they are using it to just like drop it in HP as fast as they can. But just playing passive and dropping that pot over and over again, that Polymorph seed, should be enough to slowly and steadily whittle down the hit points on that key, but as it happens, the defense of King Green is actually super solid. I'm really liking this. They're doing a very good job, but now here comes the commitment. Starfall being used already at the same time. The Phoenix comes in. Go with Terra. He wants the keep, but he just doesn't get it yet. The plant did some damage, but just not enough. Here comes another one, putting a bit of pressure onto the plant or the key in the mid lane, and they are rotating down here once again. They really want this. Blizzard once, twice, and they get keep number one. But the wraparound from Norok in the back. Gat is already there, they're trying to go for the Howling Blast, locked down together with the Tenacious Roots, but they're not getting that set up just yet. Nurok with the Frozen Tempest is trying to just get something done here. Divine Shield saving him just barely before he dies, but again Malfurion, or Muradin, sorry, jumps in, drops Uther, stuns everywhere, gets a double stun off with his Piercing Bolt. They are nearly level 20 right now, and another stun against Malfurion, the Ice Block saving Gat I'm head for now, but he gets dropped, and this is a 5 versus 3 situation and the Polish team is starting to move towards the mid lane now apparently. Go Terror, he wants to have keep number two. They are already using the Thunderclap, but he needs to be careful. Here comes another Howling Glass, and this time they might be able to get kill it. Nope, there's no follow-up damage. And Norok is trapped and is now dying. Here again, Gary making an appearance. The Gargantuan is already rushing in towards keep number three. Doesn't even want to be bothered with the one in the mid lane. But this one already down, and now we're having them move back with the entire team still alive. Nine kills against three. Nazebo again with the Fury of the Storm taken here. So this talent already in play for the extra damage on Nazebo. We're having Rewind taken for Taranda, sorry, for Rega. 
The amount of heals that you get with Rewind on Rhaegar is insane. It's already great as is, but once you have Rewind, it's just absolutely incredible. That means Taranda yes. could, of course, also go into Rewind here. We could see a Storm Shield for her. Harden Shield for Muradin. I mean, who's going to who's gonna kill the Dwarf? Let's be honest here. Who's going to kill the Dwarf? By the way, Muradin, just to give you an idea of his extra damage. He has by now 75 extra damage on his Q. It's actually not too much. 75 extra damage on the Stormbolt is a lot less than I expected. We are 18 minutes into the game. Oftentimes you will see a player um, with more than 100 at this point. But it's still enough to drop structures quite easily. And here is this the last attempt on the side of King Nguyen to make something happen. They have to somehow contest this. But here's the attempt to kill against Arthur's already. In comes Muradin jumping in for the battle. And he's trying to not only give them the axe but also the hammer with another Stormbolt going straight for that kill flame strikes everywhere trying to draw push a team but there is just nothing that they can do right now once again Gerd is going to be the focus of the Polish team Malfurion is dying here after using his ice block initially Invidum is about to go down but at least they get the kill against Jaina they're trying to get the kill against the Zebo up here at the top as well and they are not getting it oh my god how did he survive Kelthus pays with his life for this attempt and now all of a sudden Nurok might be dropped too. Nope, apparently no cooldowns ready to really apply the last bit of damage here but we have another plan being ready and this could be the last one in the game. There's also still these two garden terrors available, the one up at the top and the one in the boss lane so they could go for additional seeds but at this point with two heroes dead on the side of King Green they're saying like why would we even bother? Let's go in, let's drop that core and finish this game. The plan is already on the way and we might be able to get another kill in the meantime too. Three versus three right now. In Vido, Sylvanas needs to be careful. In comes again Terror with the damage. Does he have another Stormbolt? Maybe for Norok. Doesn't look like he does. No, well, Furin is back to business, but the plan is now there as well. And the right click on the core for the auto attack damage. And this is just too much. This is going to be game, ladies and gentlemen. Pushing team. They take down Meteor Makers. And here in the round of eight, they drop King Green as well and advance to the semi-final. Really well played by the Polish team. Extremely nice matches by them. Congratulations, and we're going to move on to the next round. Wow, Pushik team again. They take another team down. And the teams that they've been facing so far in the tournament were actually really, really strong opponents. So very well done by them. They made a bit of a name for themselves when they took in the last end of the storm in the finals Team Liquid out in the first round. It was something that nobody really expected. But now all of a sudden they are also having a very good performance here in the qualifier for end of the storm 3. These guys are really showing their skills. And for King Green of course that was a bit of a, well that was probably a little bit unexpected for them and definitely a blow to their confidence. But as we already said in the past there's a lot more qualifiers where they can qualify for the finals. Pushik team on the other hand they build that momentum up and they're trying to carry that into the final match right now. Congratulations to them for winning the last match. Very well played here and was quite fun to cast it as well. Guys, if you like the coverage, then make sure that you give the video also a thumbs up on YouTube. And I hope to see you soon for more Heroes of the Storm content here on Color TV. Have a great day and a great week and I'll see you guys soon on the channel. Bye-bye.